I am joined by Dr. Milad uh, Shadru, who is, uh, well, you'll know him as the singing dentist. And it's time for Talking Health. Now, as always, this section of the show is devoted to answering your questions. And today we're discussing why you might be suffering from some toothache and how you can actually prevent and ease the pain that you might be suffering from. It's something that six million of us in the UK suffer from, but there are a number of reasons why it could be happening to you. So any questions that you might have, give us a call and hopefully Dr. Milad can answer them for you. Give us a call, 0207 862 is the number. So, toothache. Lots of us suffer from it. What are the main causes? Okay, so yes, toothache is very common. Uh, it's something we see all the time in the clinic. At least daily, we'll get somebody coming in with an issue. The main reason that people get toothache is tooth decay, so cavities. Basically, bacteria that are in our mouth, they eat sugar, same as when we eat sugar. And the byproduct of them eating that is an acid. And the acid basically starts to burn holes in your teeth, and that can lead to big decay. And as that gets closer to the nerve, starts getting very painful. You're wincing already. This is good. I'm painting a beautiful picture. Yeah, well, I'm just, happened. because um, I have had pain before in, in, uh, with my teeth, and I just think that that means that when I go in that dentist chair, the dentist is going to say, you need a filling. So I just avoid going because I just don't want that. I know, I know. But okay. does it necessarily mean that you need a filling if you are having pain? So not necessarily, because there are other reasons why you might get pain. But if it is a cavity, then yes, the way we treat it is by having to clean out the decayed, rotted tooth, and then we replace the hole with a filling. So yes, you are gonna need work. What are the other reasons potentially you could be suffering from pain in your mouth? So that can progress onto then you getting an abscess or a dental infection. So that's like the next stage. So if the cavity has progressed to the nerve, the tooth starts to die away. And then you have essentially like an empty shell of a tooth that's full of bacteria. The bacteria multiply, have a party, and they create an abscess. And that can be very, very painful. So again, you're gonna need treatment. But unfortunately, by the time it gets to that stage, there's only really two things we can do. One is root canal treatment, mm -hmm. where we have to get in and clean out the roots, get all the bacteria out, and then fill the space. Or we've gotta take the tooth out. And so then just leave a big tooth. old space. Yes. Now there are options to obviously replace the gap. You can discuss that with your dentist, but ultimately you don't want to lose a tooth. So it's key to practice prevention. All of these things are preventable. Right, we're going to get to the prevention in a minute, but also gum disease, that's another yes. thing that a lot of people uh, suffer from. So what is it? Uh, what causes it? So gum disease in the first stages is painless. So it can go undiagnosed for a long time or unnoticed by the patients, but you'll get bleeding gums. And so many people complain and say, oh, I have bleeding gums, but they don't really ever do anything about it. That's the first stage, but is it can progress. Is that also called gin gingivitis? Exactly, yes, yeah. gingivitis. So that's the first stage. Well done. Thanks. Good, isn't it? Very painless. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have that, you need to see your dentist or your hygienist or your dental therapist because that is the early signs that something isn't quite right. I think we've got some images actually just yeah. so we can really display what this is. Okay, so see at what stage are we? Oh, look, it says it, gingivitis. Thank you. Don't know what the other one is. Next step is periodontitis. Never which now that basically the bacteria have now got under the gum. They're starting to irritate the bone. Your actual jaw bone is starting to, yeah, exactly. Feel Don't it. want that. And then advanced periodontitis. You can see how much the gums have receded. The roots of the teeth are way more exposed. The teeth are going to be pretty loose at this stage. You have a high chance of getting a gum infection now at this point. It's just not nice. So healthy gums is where we want to live. Yes. And we don't want it to progress down here. And again, this is preventable. So speak to your dentist, see your hygienist and therapist regularly, and you can prevent that from happening. Okay, uh, we're going to get to the preventions, but I think, what, Simon, you, you come on in. Yes. We've got our dental chair here. We may as well wow. put it to good use. You're in lovely smart scrubs. I've never seen scrubs look so smart, actually. Thank you very much. You nice right? to see you. Yes, welcome. Please have a seat in my chair. Thank now, you. Simon, Thank you've you. had some issues with your teeth, so this is a good opportunity for a dentist to have a little look and just make sure everything's all okay. I, I don't want to put you under pressure, but if you don't spot what's wrong, yes, <laughs> my, my career's find, finished. Find a new job. <laughs> my career's over. It's okay. going to be very obvious. Thank you very much. And Dr. Miller, if you just talk us through, because Simon won't attempt. be able to oh speak much. Oh, my goodness, you gosh. Go. That's, that's, it's as if we knew that's a lively dentist chair. It is, really, isn't it? Would you like to rest your head back? We're not sure at this point. Oh, my God. Gosh. If okay. you talk us through what you're looking for, that would be okay. great. So what a dentist is going to do, because I think people yes. have a fear that, you know, a dentist is just going to go straight in with a drill. Absolutely not. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is just have a discussion. Ask some questions. What has been happening? What's not been happening? Because that can start to give us some ideas of what may be going on before we even had a look. And then we're just going to look. And we use this lovely tool here, which is not painful at all. It's just a <laughs> little mirror. It's just a mirror. mirror. Okay. We use one every morning. We use one every morning. Okay. Would you like me to open? Yes, please. 
Thank you very much. So what I would always do, I have a routine where I start with the lower teeth and I would just start looking and we're kind of checking all the different surfaces of the teeth. We work all the way around from the left to the right. I check the inside, the outside. Very clean, my friend. Very nice. <laughs> Gold star. You get a sticker afterwards as well. Well done. And then I will go to the top and then wow, wow, wee, wow. I will. <laughs> You're not losing your what job. Is, is, please tell me that's chewing gum. No. no. It's a temporary filling. Temporary filling? Yeah, it is. Yes. DIY job or dentist job? Yeah, so listen, I was just, I was chewing something the other day. I shouldn't have been chewing the sweet and a bit of my tooth fell out. And I, I, I know I need to go. Yes. It, it's not the pain. That's not my issue. It's the cost. It's another cost. pain. Cost? Yeah, another pain. Yeah. yeah. The, the work itself is, I don't fear the dentist. It's fine. It's what I fear is handing the card over at the end. So I know I'm being silly. I must get it sorted. <laughs> yes. But it's that moment that worries me. Can you just go back one more time? Oh, no. Because, I don't need to know more. Um, so, yes, there is a temporary there. You've got a crown in front. But then the tooth in front of that also has a broken oh. bit off of it. Mm. So, I mean, oh, that, that is just a crown, though. So that's, that's, that's okay. I mean, it's ideally that should be replaced also. But, um, yes, we, we move. So are, they, are these quite common issues that Simon has? Yeah, so a broken tooth is another main reason why patients will get pain, and that is very common. Uh, patients will have um, fillings already. They'll have cracks that can develop. So anything can fail at any time, sadly, in dentistry. Could somebody call my financial advisor? And just also a quick question before Simon, I get you to come off the seat. Broken tooth, is that mm. because he's been eating too many sweeties or can it be a genetic thing? It can, it's, it's often due to, there are certain genetic things that can make the teeth weaker, but mm. oftentimes it is too much sugar, not enough kind of bacterial removal effectively, and not really seeing the dentist often enough in order I, to I don't, pick, I don't pick up regularly. situations Your early. teeth were clean, so I don't think- But no, that, that was good. Many I'm winning on one level. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Simon, back to you. Thank you, you very, very much, much thank for you. that. Thank you that for the bad, bad news. No worries. Uh, we're gonna go to calls now. So this is when we're gonna start talking about uh, preventions. You can sit okay. down as well. Look at me telling everyone to sit down. <laughs> uh, Tyanne from London, you're up first. What's your question for a dentist? Hi, um, so I have um, um, an ache that started about two to three days ago and it's in my third molar um, and it gradually moved to the first one and it just feels like a dull ache and I'm just wondering, should I be worried that it's going to get worse than this? Okay. Hi, Tyanne. Thank you very much for your question. Your third molar, that's your wisdom tooth. So wisdom tooth pain is very common. You can get it. Um, often it's when the teeth are kind of growing and they're growing out. And it may just be that you have a little localized infection around the wisdom tooth, which is giving some okay. radiated pain. So rinsing with hot salty water can definitely help that. However, any kind of pain that isn't resolving or can be controlled with painkillers just for a couple of days, if it's progressing mm. or if it's still there, 100% go and see your dentist for sure. Okay. Thank you. I don't think that's the news that anybody wants, but that's the news most people are going to get when they call up now. Uh, okay, so Joe on Facebook has asked, please could I have some advice on bruxism? Yes. Uh, I've suffered for a few years and I have three cracked teeth, an abscess and an infection and two root canals. My goodness. And now I have a mouth guard, but clench on it so hard, it constantly wakes me. What else I can do? First of all, bruxism. What yes. are we talking about there? So bruxism is tooth grinding or clenching basically and it's it's quite a common thing a lot of patients do it i do it um it's stress it's stress related and obviously the world is so stressful these days a lot of people are clenching and grinding so it's good that you have a mouth guard because that is how we treat it but there's lots of different types of mouth guards so if you find you are chewing on it excessively speak with your dentist because it may be that you have a different type of mouth guard made um, and that can help to resolve it but it is an issue we can't really stop you doing it but we can prevent damage arising from it. And another treatment that can be useful for a lot of patients is Botox. You can actually have Botox into the jaw muscles and that can relax the muscles. It can actually cause atrophy of the muscles. Why? I, I shouldn't laugh. Botox? I'm only laughing because I know that there's lots of people, people I know that will be using that as an excuse. Now, oh, I have to have the Botox for my, my, my bruxism. Yes, not in your face, okay? <laughs> okay? In the upper part, it won't help that. Just in the lower part, it, it's, I've it's got down you. There. But yeah, that is something else you can look at. But it, it's, it's a very common problem, bruxism. Uh, we're going to now speak to Pat from Liverpool. Pat, what's your question for the dentist? Hi, hi, thanks for, thanks for taking the call. Um, the whole side of my face is aching, like neuralgia type pain, um, headache and pain. And and the, one of the molars on the bottom, um, I can't eat on it. It's It causes a sharp pain. So consequently, I'm just eating on one side of my mouth. What does that sound like? 
Okay, that could be a few things. Um, pain on a tooth specifically. So the fact you can pinpoint the tooth does help us a yeah. little bit, help to diagnose it. Pain specifically can indicate an infection in that tooth. Um, it could also indicate a crack in that tooth. So definitely those are two things that you need to see the dentist about. With the infection, does it always have to be go in, clean it out and get, is there any way you can take like antibiotics for an infection? So antibiotics can help in the short term. They can help to quieten down a flare up, but they will not treat the problem. So just pumping yourself full of antibiotics every so often is definitely not going to sort the problem out. Won't so work. you have to have the treatment. It can help in the short term. We're going to speak to Shirley now from Lancashire. What's your question? Hello. Um, well, hello. Hi, Hi. We can hear you. Hello. Hi, yes. <laughs> hello. I've got, I've had a tooth removed three weeks ago. I have had trouble with my uh, teeth and I've been seeing a dentist. They can't get to the bottom of the pain. Um, whether it's referred from other teeth that we just haven't got to the bottom. But the tooth I had out, because it was um, painful, and I had it out as an emergency, um, it, it's out, but the tooth next to it, which is my back molar, my last molar, which is quite big, has like this... Um, I thought it was a filling at first, but I thought, well, how could they have got a filling with that tooth there? Um, and it's like a black spot... Ooh. A black spot. It's like a black out. spot. Okay. And, on the um, tooth, Shirley? Yes, on the side of the tooth. The, oh. the tooth that's come out was against. Yes. Oh, okay. that doesn't sound and, good. And uh, it, it, it's aggravating. I wouldn't say painful, but just Negligent. aggravating and not right. Okay, so that spot may have been there for a very, very, very long time. And it might not actually be something bad. It could just be staining. It could be caused from that original tooth. Now that tooth is gone, you can actually see that area. So if you're getting pain from it, it could also be, the pain could still just be related to the fact you've had an extraction three weeks ago. Things are still healing. It does take a little bit of time for things to heal up. So I would obviously discuss with your dentist. They can check that spot, make sure it's not decay, make sure it's not active decay and then they can obviously treat it for you if it is but more times than not it, it was probably always there but you could never see it because the other tooth was in front of it so maybe give it a bit of time to yes. to calm down and also make sure that you're cleaning it really good exactly you'll have more access now to clean it do you have to floss yes really you must. well Who's you have time to, to floss these days it takes 30 seconds well, I, I, and do you know what happens if you don't floss Ad oh, it's gone now. advanced periodontitis well, that doesn't yes. sound good. Well, look, in, interdental cleaning is the key. So it's not necessarily floss. Floss is one tool to clean in between your teeth. And that works very well if you've got tight gaps. So if you've got really big gaps between your teeth, you need to use the brushes. They look like bug brushes. Well, yeah. I've tried everything and I just, I really struggle to get into the gaps in my teeth, but I'll, Technique. I'll try harder. We'll speak afterwards. Okay. <laughs> well, Sharon from Norfolk, I think you're up next. What's your question for the doctor? Thank you. Um, my crowns keep breaking on my teeth. Oh. They just come out. I want to know why, please. Is that bad dentistry? So crowns keep breaking. It could be lots of different reasons. So a crown could break because the tooth underneath it has just got weak over time. It could break because there's a lot of force going on there. So going back to that clenching or grinding, um, we see that a lot in patients where they actually break teeth, they break crowns. You can break a lot of stuff in your mouth. The jaw is one of the strongest joints in your body, pound for pound, and it can exert a lot of force and the teeth end up getting a bit of a bashing in life. So definitely, if you're finding it's happening often, it could be a clenching or grinding thing. And there's lots of different symptoms that we look for. A lot of patients do it when they're sleeping. And coming to your house and watching you sleep is not a service I provide. So sadly, we can't do that. But there are symptoms and things we can pick up on. So definitely speak with your dentist and see it may be related to that. Uh, Teresa from Hertfordshire, what's your question for the dentist? Good, good afternoon. Um, my question is, I've been on steroids for about a couple of months and in that time I've, I've noticed I've got gum disease. I've just come off them. Um, but it's, it's, uh, the, 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 I don't want the, the lower teeth uh, to fall out. I'm, I'm worried about that. So obviously advanced gum disease there. We've got the pictures back. So uh, where do we think Teresa might be on that scale? Probably Gosh. this end. I'm, I'm hoping not at the advanced stage, um, but 
it's, it's difficult to tell, obviously, without and an examination. So we didn't get to, when we spoke about this earlier, the preventative me measures. Yeah. I feel like flossing is going to come up in this again, which is my bugbear. But but uh, go on, it how, really how is, do yeah. you prevent? So this is caused by plaque. Everybody has plaque in their mouth. It's a sticky biofilm of bacteria. Mm -hmm. And it basically releases toxins that irritate the gums. That's when you get the first signs, the bleeding gums is a response to that. If that progresses, then the gum starts to kind of run away from it. And there is a gap between your gum and your bone underneath that that pocket is what we call it that pocket starts to increase as the pocket gets bigger more bacteria go inside they multiply the gum runs away the bone runs away and as the bone dissolves away your teeth just get looser gaps get bigger you can get infections so that's a slow process it happens over a long period of time mm. but it is treatable and it is preventable cleaning at home effectively is key your dentist hygienist or dental therapist can help you as well because once it builds up it goes very hard it goes to the stage which is then called calculus or tartar. You can't remove that then with brushing or flossing or brushes or anything. Your dentist has to do a scale and polish, a mm -hmm. good thorough clean, get out all the stuff, but then also show you what you specifically need to do for your mouth to prevent this coming back. Mouthwashes can help as well. There are certain ones that are targeted specifically for gums. Oh, okay. So a uh, brushing, electric toothbrush, advisable? Yes, preferably, definitely. Uh, flossing? Or any type of interdental cleaning. And, and mouthwash. Yes, okay. on top of, not as a replacement. Got you, Teresa. So do those three, the Holy Trinity when brushing your teeth. Uh, Janet from Edinburgh, what's your question for the dentist? Hello, I would like to know how you can stop your teeth going yellow. Oh. And you go to a dentist, but they don't seem to be able to stop it. Great question. So this is more aesthetic rather than, I'm sure you don't care as long yes. as the teeth are strong and healthy and clean what colour they are. But yes, how do you, yes. How do you prevent them from Great question, out? Janet. So there, there's basically two main reasons why teeth discolour over time. One is staining, which teeth can absorb stain. So from tea, coffee, red wine, smack bowl, curry, all the good stuff. Cigarettes? Cigarettes, yeah, smoking. The teeth can kind of absorb the stains. Mm. Now, there is things we can do to fix that. So tooth whitening treatments can be done. Um, whitening products you can buy over the counter are not bad at removing external staining. But if the stain has really got internal, you have to do professional whitening with the dentist. And only the dentist. Please keep it safe. <laughs> okay. Keep it safe, y'all. And then the next reason is just aging. So the inside surface of our tooth is yellow. The enamel on the outside, that's called dentine on the inside. The enamel on the outside is white. Over time, as the enamel kind of wears thinner, the yellower tooth shows through more. So just in time, our teeth do look darker. And will whitening help that? Absolutely that. It will penetrate the enamel, whiten up the inside. This has been tremendous. Thank you, Dr. Millard. We are for joining us, answering all the questions as well. Pleasure. Tremendous, and thank you for your questions.